Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Thank you so very much, Lord, for allowing us to praise and to worship you, Lord. Thank you for your wonderful presence, Lord, your spirit being here with us. I want to pray for each person, each family, Lord, who gave their tithing and offering to you as an act of worship. I want to pray blessing upon their families, Lord. I want to pray for each person here today, Lord. They'll completely die to their will. I pray that you'll open up their spiritual ears and eyes that they can see and, and hear and understand your word. I pray for myself, Lord, that I completely die to my will. And I pray, Lord, for an unlimited portion of your anointing power, your spirit to flow through me and upon me to, to allow the word to flow here this morning. To someone here that needs to be born again or healed or set free or delivered from anything, Lord, let them accept you in the name of Jesus Christ we do pray. Amen. Amen. Um, today we're going to be going over the new covenant. If you don't mind, put up the, the covenants on the screen. We'll have these right here next to you in the, in the, in the pew, also on the screen here, um, and in the scriptures, because I want you to have these to understand them. The biggest thing I've learned years ago was is that most Christians do not understand why they're Christians. They have no idea what dispensation of time we're in, they have no understanding except Jesus Christ died on the cross. He was buried and he arose. And that's great. Now, I was told biblically that that's the gospel. The Bible don't say that. Jesus Christ died on the cross and buried and arose is the fulfillment of the gospel. That's not the gospel. It's the fulfillment of it. So my question was is, what did he fulfill? And most folks have no idea, no, no idea about this kind of thing. But here's why it's important for you to know these things. Because you, as a Christian, are in the new covenant right now, which is the last one. But you're only in the sixth dispensation of time called grace. That started in, at the cross 2,000 years ago. And we're there right now. And I haven't taught on that yet. That's coming up soon. But under this new covenant, every one of these covenants you see above that, the first seven, um, builds upon the next one until it gets to the new covenant. So if you don't understand that, you've got to understand you have a whole lot more than this dying to go in heaven, given to you for a purpose. Now, most people don't realize is that all these covenants, from the Edenic covenant all the way down to the Demic, the Noah, Understand, I've taught this already, but just quick to make sure you understand this. Everything in life, from our government to all the races of the world, all the paganism, do we uh, have a, uh, when somebody murders somebody out here and they go to jail, do we, have a, do we have a death penalty or not? All that's there. Where did the Chinese come from? Where did Russia come from? All that's there. Ladies, when you have a baby and it hurts, all that's there. Men, women, when you go out here and you dig in a ditch and you sweat, all that's there. No, it's everything in life you can think of, anything, is tied up right here in these covenants. It came out of these covenants. And most folks don't realize is that a lot of curses are still in the earth from these dispensations and covenants. And the moral aspects of these are still as well as the, is there now too. Biggest argument you'll see people arguing over with is say, well, I'm only a New Covenant guy. I only believe in the New Testament. How many understands that New Covenant means New Testament? It does not mean, though, for you to read just your New Testament only and leave out the old. That's foolishness. If you do that, you will not understand the New Testament. I can guarantee you that. Because what you're going to do is you're going to try to read the New Testament from your perspective in your religion of man. Whether, whatever quote denomination that you decide to follow, which has got nothing to do with God, you're going to try to follow the New Testament based off of your belief and you're going to miss the whole point of the covenant that you're in right now, which is the New Covenant. Does that, does that make any sense? Okay, It's important to know these things, guys, because Satan knows them. And God wants you to know what, what belongs to you. Amen? Now, some of these scriptures you've heard before, but I'm going to go over it in a little bit different way this time to see if you can get a hold of this. Turn to Hebrews chapter 8. Because remember, all of these covenants you've got finished looking at, it all goes down 
Because I've heard tell, people tell me all the time, well, I'm not under the law. I ain't got nothing to do with the law. I'm under grace. Well, that sounds great, and I, and I said it before, but you've got to understand, the law is not bad. The law was perfect. The law was great. The law was wonderful for a purpose. Most folks will have no idea why Christ even came here and died. Okay? It was to destroy what? The works of the devil. Okay? Yes, you will ultimately get to go to heaven. That's great. But do you know who you are in Christ? And this is why this is important. I want you to watch this. Look at Hebrews chapter 8 and look at verses uh, 6 through 13 first. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then there should be no place have been sought for a second. For finding fault with, with them, he said, Behold, the days come. The, please get a hold of this. Please write this down because this is where most Christians miss it. The days come, saith the Lord, I will make a new covenant. Underline that. Which means New Testament, New Covenant. And here's the part we always miss. He, I'm going to make it with the Gentiles only. Does it say that? What, is, what does the Bible say? I'm going to make a covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. That's huge to underline. If you leave that out and you are a Christian, then you have a false, fake covenant. And I'm telling you this because I'm telling you, most churches today are teaching a fake gospel. They're teaching a replacement theology, which is not in the Bible. The Bible makes it real clear under the first seven covenants, going down to the new covenant, he said, I will make a new covenant, which is what you're in right now, church, but I'm going to make it first with who? What does it say? With the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Now, this is important to see this. Not according to the covenant that I made with the fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant. And I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Again, underline that. With the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind, and I will write them in their hearts, and I will be unto them a God, and they shall be unto me a people, and they shall not teach every man his brother, like they used to teach under the old law. Because everybody is not your brother. You don't even understand that? How many understands that all people are creations of God? I mean, who believes that? But all people are not children of God. See, a lot of people say, well, all people are children of God. No, they're not. They're all creations of God. You only become a child of Almighty God when you get born again under this new covenant and he places a new nature spiritually inside your body. Without that, you're not a new creation born again, child. In other words, we all have been created by God just like, my, just like my dog and my cat's been created by God. Your fish has been created by God. The zebra, the tiger has been created by God. Humans have been created by God. But everybody does not accept Jesus Christ. This is why this is important to see what it's showing you here. And they shall not teach every man his, his neighbor, every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord for all shall know me. From the least to the greatest, get a hold of this, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities, will I remember no more. Then uh, in that he saith, a new covenant he hath made the first old, now that which decayeth and waxeth old is already to vanish away. Now this is hugely important because again, the biggest problem is, is that we, we've been taught a false lie. I remember growing up in church, and I was always told this, 
that Jesus Christ came and died on the cross and those mean Jews killed my Jesus. And because they rejected him, then he goes to the Gentiles and starts a new church. That's not in Scripture. That is not in the Bible nowhere. And if you believe that, you're not born again under a new covenant. I want you to get a hold of that. That's not what the Bible says at all. It's nowhere in Scripture. I just, I just read it to you. Under the new covenant, he says, I'm going to make a covenant with who? With the house of Israel and Judah. Now, understand how this works. Remember, nationally, Israel's eyes was blinded. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. If they was not blinded, all of us are going to go to hell. Now, why is this important? Because I'm fixing to show you here the whole point of the gospel, and we're going to kind of set it up for you to make sure you understand. Because I know you know this, but just try to get a hold of this before, before I get into the actual scriptures of this. Okay? There was no such thing as Israel. No such thing as a Jew. No such thing as a Hebrew. Every single human being on the earth from the very first covenant and second covenant when Adam and Eve fell, okay, in the garden and sinned, from that point on, there was no such thing as anybody being with God. Remember, they lost that in the garden. And all these covenants are getting us back to where we're supposed to be. And it ends up going to the new covenant before you and I have access to Almighty God again. Amen. Now this is important because every single person is called a Gentile. A Gentile is considered a heathen. A Gentile is considered dogs. Okay, you got to understand. There was no such thing as Jewish people. No such thing as Israel. Abram's father was a Gentile. And the only way that God could save our lives, now hear this, is for him to create these covenants and for him to lay it out there perfectly. And God made the covenant himself so that his son, Christ, G G Jesus Christ, watch this now, the Messiah, we start saying about it, could come here and take on flesh. The word became flesh. So he could die as a sacrifice. But he could not take on flesh of a Gentile. He had to take on flesh of the very covenant who he made. And remember, he changed. Now I'm going to show it to you, but I'm going to lay it here to you now. Abraham, Isaac, and who? Jacob. Now it's important to know. Because right now we see all the fighting on TV right now. All the Palestinians. All the Muslims. Caused or teaching poor, poor Palestinians. Israel stole their land. That's not from God. I've already showed you the Palestinian land covenant. The Bible makes it real clear that Abram, his first child was named who? Ishmael. His mother was Hagar from Egypt. He, she was a slave given to him by Sarah. That was his natural flesh having a baby seed. And God said, I will bless you but I'm not making a covenant with you, Palestinians, Muslims. Why? Because that's natural seed. That's something that man can do. But I'm going to wait until Abram cannot have a child and Sarah cannot physically have a child and I'm going to change their name from Abram to Abraham and Sarah to Sarah. Put the ha in their name, the glory of God. And that's, that, listen, this is important because this is what Christians, we always say, is, is all about. The birth of Jesus Christ. That's coming up here soon. You've got to understand to where there would be no covenant. There would be none of this unless Christ came here and took on flesh. And he could not take on flesh of, of Ishmael. Because that's a, that's a natural flesh. So when God put the spiritual seed through Abram and changed his name, he preached the gospel to him. This is important. Okay, Christ is the fulfillment of that gospel. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, his name was changed to Israel to create a new people under a new covenant. Hear me. Change your name. They're Jewish people now. That's why you see all these covenants coming down and God creates the law, gives it to them and says, now do it. And he knows that, 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 that they couldn't do it. But he had to have that in place 
for Christ to come here to be born as a Jew, as a rabbi under that old covenant to come here and die and to fulfill that very covenant to open it up for you and I to be born under a new covenant to be born again back spiritually. Does that make any sense to anybody? Now I'm going to show you the scripture to prove why this I say it. Because people say, well you just lost your mind pastor. Well no I haven't. See, the, the problem is people don't understand these things, so they fall for anything. And I've watched Christians do this over and over and over, and they miss what God is trying to show us, and I don't want you to be fooled. Amen? So now, when knowing all that, I want you to go over to Galatians 3. Galatians 3. I want you to see something here, very, very powerful. Because guys... <laughs> This covenant was, yes, given to Israel, but it opens up to all of us. All of us gets blessed. But it first has to go to the Jew. Because let me tell you something, in the book of Acts, in the upper room, when the Holy Spirit fell in the book of Acts, on what we call Pentecost, which is one of the feast days, and it starts at the beginning of the church, there was not one Gentile among them. Not one. The church was not built upon a Gentile. You better hear me on this. And the problem, we, I told you about this today, the problem we have today is we're so proud of our nationalities. I don't care if you're Chinese or, or Spanish or Mexican or, or English. Who cares? That's got nothing to do with Christianity. There is no such thing as a Gentile Christian. No such thing as a British Christian. No such thing as a Spanish Christian. Quit putting all the flesh in the front of a Christian. Christian is spiritual, not fleshy. Has nothing to do with it. But yet our religion does that garbage, trying to bring us back to our nationality and our nations, and God's whole covenant was to get us out of that garbage into the spiritual light of Christ. Does that make any sense? Now watch, this is so powerful. I, I, I love God's word. Remember, this covenant here is irreversible irreversible, and it's unconditional. In other words, Christ has made a way, complete way for us. So what has it got to do with Abram having a gospel preached to him? Well, let's look at this. Look at uh, Galatians chapter 3, and look at verses 13. <clears throat> Christ, notice the word that says who? Christ. Who's Christ? The Son of God. Christ is the Word. Christ is the ha that was put into Abram's name. Christ is the spiritual part. Christ is not Jesus, but Jesus is Christ. Did you catch that? Jesus is the son of man. Christ is the son of God. The Christ is in the Jesus. The Jesus died on the cross to open up the Christ, which is the kingdom of God, which is what you're born into. You're not born into Jesus. You're born into Christ. Does that make any sense to anybody? You've got to get a hold of the spiritual and the natural. Please, please get this. Christ have redeemed us from the curse of the law. What's the curse of the law? God put the law here under the covenant and gave it to the Jews, and the curse of the law is death. If you cannot operate perfectly under the law that he set out here, and no one can, that's why, that's why he put it here, something must die in the place of that penalty. And remember, the Jews, he set up on purpose to where every year they had a high priest, they had sacrificial lambs, and every year they had to go in here and kill and sacrifice animals to cover their sins for one year at a time. And Christ came here and took on flesh, okay, Jesus, and become the Lamb of God so he could die for, uh, for them first and then for all of us. Amen? Now watch this, right? This is so powerful being made a curse for us, being made a curse for us, that's what Christ did, as it is written, curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. How many here believes that? This is important. Now look at Matthew 5, 17. And while you're turning there, let me make sure you understand this right here. What he said, he said he redeemed us from the curse of the law. He did not redeem you from the law. Because I get so tired of hearing Christians put the law down like it's a bad thing. The Bible says it's perfect. 
It's glorious. It's, it's wonderful. He redeemed you from the curse of the law, not the law itself. If you don't have the law, you're, going, you, you're actually going to hell. Well, I never heard that before. I'm going to show it to you in Scripture. So don't think I'm crazy again. The law is wonderful and it's perfect. Okay? Now, this is important to know how this is laid out here under these, uh, under these covenants. Matthew 5, 17 says this, Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy, but what? To fulfill the law. Now, if it's so bad and the law is no good and we don't need it anymore, then why did he fill it? Why did he, why did he just destroy it? Because it's terrible. It's not terrible. It's wonderful. That's why he did not destroy it. I've come here to fulfill it for a purpose. What's the purpose, all you Christians, who's under the new covenant? You need, you need to know that. Why did he fill this law? I'm going to show it to you. This is so powerful. There's a reason why he died on the cross for you. Uh, look at uh, Romans chapter, uh, excuse me, uh, Galatians chapter 3, verses 14. Go back there. Galatians 3, 14. But he's already told you in verses 13 that he redeemed us from the curse of the law. So my question to you is this, why? Why did he do all this for? For I can go to heaven. No. That's, that's, see, everybody who's sitting here has been taught this. Romans Road Prayer. You don't want to go to hell. No, Greg. No, so-and-so. No, so-and-so. Okay, just say this prayer with me. Repeat, repeat this out loud. And you start saying a prayer, repeating somebody. Dun, 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 now you're magically saved and you get a free golden ticket to heaven. That's not Christianity. That's not, that's not biblical. If, if you just sit here and repeat a prayer for somebody and nothing inside you changes and the new nature, the new covenant is not put inside you, all you did was just repeat something someone says, magical words don't get you to heaven. That's not scriptural. Are y'all getting a hold of this, anybody? I want, you, I want you to be blessed by what God says. Here's why. Here's one of the perfect reasons of why he died on the cross for you. Here's, here's, here's what he says in verses 14. So that the blessings of Abraham, that's why he died, took on the curse for you, so that the blessings of Abraham might come on who? The Gentiles, which is all of us. Through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Without the Spirit, you will not go to heaven. Without the Spirit, you can't be born again. Without the Spirit, you're not part of the new covenant. But Greg, I'm a good religious person. Great, in whose eyes? Not in God's eyes. God only sees us the blood of his son Jesus Christ and he gives us that promise of the Holy Spirit do you realize guys that everybody on this earth everybody planet earth every human being I don't care what nationality you come from doesn't really matter every human being has a body and the body can be black white Chinese Russian who cares it doesn't really matter we all to put a lot of stock into that don't mean a hill of beans to God body is body then every, every human being on this planet has a soul, your mind, your emotions, your feelings, your thoughts, and every human being has a spirit in them which makes them different than animals. Okay? But here's a problem. I have lost that spirit now. Amen to that, brother. The difference between those people and us is that we get born again, not just with a human spirit, but he places his Holy Spirit, the new covenant, inside of us. We die into Christ's birth and death. Hear me, watch this now. He come to sit here and be born to die. We actually die into him and we, we are reborn back into Christ. And he takes that sin nature that you was born into and places a heavenly, holy, spiritual nature back inside you. Are y'all getting a hold of this? Without, that's the only difference between me and you and the rest of the world. The world I hear, we, we're, we, we're taught so many lies. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Amen to that. If you only believe God 
loves us so much that he gave us his son. Amen? Past tense, watch this now. He made a way. This is the way. There's only one door. All religions don't lead to heaven. You're not going to be a Buddhist and a Muslim and Palestinian reading the Quran and all these things, Catholicism, and think you're going to do what you want to, pray to Mary, live the way you want to as a homosexual, murder people. No! And think you're going to go to heaven because God is love, 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 love. That's not scriptural. It's not, it's not going to happen. If the nature changes on the inside of a person, they don't want to murder if their nature changes on the inside of somebody, they don't want to lie. If their nature changes on the inside of somebody, they don't want to be a homosexual. If the nature changes on the inside of somebody, are y'all getting a hold of this, things will start changing from the inside out. Without that, you're just religious. You're just doing the best you can, trying to, trying to impress God. It will never happen. It will never work because you're missing the very covenants that God laid out here for us. Are y'all getting a hold of this, Anybody? Now go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Look at verses uh, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh of a Russian, of an American, of a Chinese, of a black or a white. Put so much stupidity on that kind of stuff. Do y'all know somebody got fired just recently, Friday? Now, I've already heard this before in colleges, but now here in America at a high, high school, a teacher was fired because... A girl, a female, tells her teacher her preferred pronoun is to be called a boy. And he said, you are a girl, I'll call you by your name. They fired him. It's because if Ralph walks into school one day and feels like Renee, and if, and, if, and if he says, I want to be called Renee today, and if you don't sit here and say, okay, you're Renee, I mean, you look like a boy and you feel like a boy and you, look, you talk like a boy, you feel like a woman today. So I have to call you by that, your preferred pronoun, or I get fired. All that garbage is of, of the pit of hell. There is two genders, and it's called male and female. No such thing as God ever created some, some transgenders. That's not biblical. It's in the blood. It's in the DNA, the Bible says. I don't care. Listen, you can be born with all kind of weird, weird body parts. It's like you can have two heads joined together, Siamese twins. You can have people come out with no arms or, or two extra legs or something. They have, to, they have to fix all that. That's part of the curse that comes back to these covenants. God didn't do that. But inside the blood... Inside the body, they test it with all the X and Y chromosomes, and they can tell you real quickly if you're a male or a female. California's already gone to babies. A baby. A baby. How stupid. Can you, can, can, can you imagine going to a baby's birthday party? A baby. I hope it never, I hope it never, never, never comes to the South. The, the babies is, from the time you're born to the time you're four years old, you cannot put a male or female sex upon the baby. They get to choose when they're four years old what, what they want to be. Really? Now, I'm showing you this because this reason, guys. The world has gotten so crazy, we're missing the, the power of Almighty God. We're missing the covenants. As I said before, my dog might feel like a cat and scratch in a litter box, but he's still a dog. Okay, how you feel? You can change all your extremities. You can change your hair, put makeup on, all these things. You're not going to change the DNA makeup. Just like you Christians, you can sit here and you can play church all you want to and say, I'm religious, I'm holy, I'm a this, I'm a that. But unless the DNA has changed inside you, unless you get a new covenant inside you, unless you get born again, you don't belong to God. It's the same thing. Does that make any sense? Look at verses 1 again. There, therefore, no condemnation for them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. After the Spirit. you got the Spirit inside you. 
You have it inside you. And I know you know it. Whether you understand it or not, you know it. When you start doing something stupid, the Holy Spirit tells you, what are you doing? Don't go there. Don't go here or he'll convict you of something. Look at verses 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. Bottom line is, if I don't have the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, I'm not born again. Religion won't get you to heaven. That's part of this new covenant. Y'all seen this, anybody? Look at verses 3. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son, which is Christ, in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned in the flesh, that's Jesus, y'all getting a hold of this, that the righteousness of the law, because the law is righteous, it's holy, might be fulfilled, might be fulfilled where? In us. So all of us who don't want to do the old law, then you don't have Christ. Because if you've got Christ, he took the very old law that was perfect that you could not do and fulfilled it and put it inside of us. Y'all getting a hold of this, anybody? Yes, no, maybe? Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. If you're more concerned with what um, tribe, there's, there's nothing wrong with you finding out your history. I did all that. If you got Indian or American history, or English or, or whatever in, in your life, Irish, all that's great. But listen, I don't care if you're Irish or if you're Indian or England. Don't let Satan lie to you and say, well, I have a bad temper because I'm Irish. No, no, no. Did, did you get born again? Did you get born again? If you got born again, the nature's changed. Don't let Satan tell you because great-great-grandpa was a drunk, now I'm a drunk because of that. I have a bad temper because of that. No, don't live off your flesh. The flesh is flesh. Your flesh never goes to heaven. If you've been born again, Christ is inside you. Hallelujah. Are y'all getting a hold of this, anybody? That's why this new covenant is so important to know how and what it came down through so we could have it. I get excited because here's what people don't understand. Um, this is eternal completeness. Now I want you to watch that. I'm fixing to show you something you never have heard. Most of us have never heard this before. Go over to Galatians 3 and go over to verses 6. Galatians 3 and go over to Verses 6. And this is pretty cool right here. I remember years ago when God showed this to me, I had to question what he was talking about. Because all the religious garbage I heard messed me up. Now I understand it, thank God. So I understand my covenant. So now I can learn how to walk in my covenant. Look at this, Genesis 3, look at verses 6. And this is pretty cool. Even as Abraham believed God... And it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now, now stop right there a minute. Remember, Abram was in another country. He came out of paganism, and God spoke to him and said, Get out of this country and go where I tell you to go. Obey me. He could not see, he could not physically hear. He was hearing spiritually what God was trying to show him and say, Do. Okay? Now, watch how important this is. Know ye therefore, verse 7 that they which are of faith. How many of you here are of faith? Okay, let me ask you a question. How many here are saved? Okay, then you're of faith. If you're not, you're not saved. In other words, that's the point I'm trying to make to you. Romans Road, prayer don't, don't bring the faith. In other words, you must be born again and the faith is there that Christ put inside you. You are a faith person. It's no difference, guys, listen to this, then Abram, who could not see, had to have faith in what God said. Now watch this. To start a brand new people so that Christ could come here and die as a Jew under the law that he created under the covenant. Now you and I today must believe and must have faith just like Abraham in something you cannot see that he has fulfilled the very thing that he gave Abraham. Does that make any sense? Watch this. Verse 7. Know you therefore that they which are faith are the same or the children of Abraham. That's why I was talking about you. We're the sons of Abraham. 
because we're of faith. But Christ, or what we believe in, is not what God say go and do. We believe in the, in the fulfilled, very fulfilled thing that Christ did for us. Does that make any sense? Look at, look at verses 8. And the scripture foreseeing, now this is cool, that God would justify who? Call y'all name out there. That's who you used to be. Justify the heathen, which is every country of the earth except Israel. That's Gentiles. It's called heathens. Okay? God would justify the Gentiles or the heathen through faith preached before the gospel to Abraham. Now, get a hold of this. Saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed, so then they which be of faith are blessed with faith for Abraham. Now, and my question when I was younger was, and I had nobody answer the question for me, because I've always asked questions. I get, get in trouble sometimes, but, you know, I want to learn. So I quit asking questions to a bunch of people and I started asking them to God. And I started getting answers. My question was, if Jesus Christ died on the cross, buried and arose, was the gospel, then how in the world was the gospel preached to Abraham when Abraham was before Christ came here and took on flesh? Because the Bible says, Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am. That's the Christ. I am. The great I am. That's the spiritual part. Who came here and took off. See, most people miss that part. Remember the whole point. Now, let me say it before. Let's go back to Genesis 12. We're going to end right here. People, people, and I'm telling you, until I started preaching this, and Gary and I started talking about this, I had never ever in my life ever heard one preacher in 51 years of my life ever Growing up especially, preach what I'm fixing to show you right now. Not one. I've never heard that Genesis 12 is the gospel. Never heard that in my life. But the, every, every, one of your Bibles in your hands right now will show you the exact same thing. This is the gospel that was preached to Abraham. Christ is the fulfillment of that gospel. Thank God he did. Why? Because all nations, there's no such thing as nations, all people were Gentiles, all sinners born into a sin nature, all pagan heathens because of what Satan did in the garden. Amen? Y'all understand that, right? So God made a way, hallelujah, for his son to come here and take on flesh of a Jew created under a covenant because he changed Abraham's name. You remember, the grandson of Abraham, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jacob wrestled with God and he changed his name to Israel. That's important. Why is it important? Look at Genesis 12. Look at verses 1 through 3. Now the Lord hath said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. And he did. Amen. And I will bless thee. And he did. And make thy name great. And he did. And... Uh, Thou shalt be a blessing, and he, he is still is to this very day, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. When God preached that to Abraham, he was preaching the gospel. That's the gospel right there. That's not, that was never, never taught to me, ever. But your Bible show you that. All your study Bibles will point to the exact same place. Christ, hallelujah, is the fulfillment of that gospel. So that's why I have the promises of Abraham, because as I showed you in Galatians, the reason he became a, a curse on the cross, so I can have the blessings of Abraham. So what's that mean? Okay? I want to know what it means. So you got to understand all the blessings that was given to Abraham now belongs to me through Christ. Does that make any sense? Now this is this this right here, and I can and I have I don't have time to do it today because of time's sake, but this here is really just a basic outline of the new covenant. But let me just say it like this right here in, in closing. Just as God 
created from a Gentile nation, a Gentile people, in other words, a whole new nation. How did he do it? Spiritually. Remember Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Remember those three. That's the God of the Bible that we serve. If you don't serve that God, then you're not born again. Because remember Cornelius in the book of Abraham, I mean in the book of Acts, remember what he said. He said, I want to follow the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He was a Gentile. And he was the first Gentile that was grafted in after the covenant he made and changed the first group. The first group was all Gentiles too. And God changed those people's DNA and made a covenant with them and called them Israel, called them Jews and said, you're my people, my people, my people. Brings them out of Egypt. Right? Y'all seeing this? I'm going to bring you to a land. Remember, you remember Genesis 12? To a land, the promised land. Y'all remember all the stories of Moses going all through the Old Covenant? That's what I was talking about. Christ is that spiritual seed that goes all the way through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and keeps on going through the flood all the way through and to the Holy Spirit overshadows Mary. That's more into that deep, deeper next week. And now all of a sudden, the Christ child, Christ, the spiritual part, the Word, takes on flesh. And the cool part is, is that Joseph and Mary's physical line, physical, natural line, runs all the way back to the Hebrew Jewish line on purpose because Jesus, the physical flesh of Jesus, had to be under that covenant under a Hebrew. He did that to start a brand new people, okay? So he could die and create another new people. Amen. Who's that? Us. We are a brand new creation, a brand new people walking on the earth of all creeds and colors and sizes and shapes from all over the world who are born again and have the exact same spirit of Christ living in all of us and we're a temple of Almighty God. Amen. You know how powerful that is? Think about that. If you understand that covenant like that, things will change. You won't get so beat up on this, I got blue eyes, I got brown eyes, I've got black hair, and all my family ancestors, great, it's wonderful. But all of them, all of them are heathens. Every one of them was all born to sin nature. Now I'm not. But now what does is, what is the church teach now? No, Greg, we're all sinners. Nobody's perfect. We teach that kind of stuff in the church all the time, right? Right? Y'all heard your whole life, right? Why? Because Satan's job is to keep you in your flesh. Keep you in your sin. Keep you, you're no good, Greg. You're all old sinners. You're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. If I stay there, focus in on my nationality and focus in on my sin and focus in on I'm no good, that's why I'll stay. And God said, uh, Greg, uh, wake up. You're a brand new creature. You're a new person. You're a new race. Just as Israel was changed on how they're a brand new race, you are too. You have a new nature inside you. You're born again. So quit focusing on you're not perfect in the flesh. I already know that, but you are perfect in your spirit because I'm with you. Focus in on your spirit, man, and watch what happens. Things will change. See, our eyes, our soul, our mind always focus in on the flesh, and God says, walk in the spirit. Your choice. Your choice. When you do that, things will change. Now, Brother Greg, you don't know all I've done. You don't have to know. I just know this right here. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. Well, you think Brother Greg is Mother Teresa in heaven? I don't know. Did she get born again? I mean, seriously, I'm not being when I say that. Because Catholicism won't get you there. The Pope won't get you there. A rosary bead, which is evil of the devil, won't get you there. Praying to Mary won't get you there. So did she get born again? I hope so, because all the works that she did won't get you there. I'm just trying to show you. All the way anybody can get in heaven, because we're all born into dysfunctional families. We all are. All human race is flawed. 
You can try to cover it up all you want to with all the all religion and all of your uh, going to college. You can have 15 doctor's degrees if you want to and speak all wonderful English. It's great. And they ain't changed nothing on the inside yet. You hear me? You see, when I, when I read this book right here, I thought I had to be really intelligent. And God said, keep on trying. You won't, you won't, get, no, you won't get very far. All this, these and thous and those and trying to speak all proper. Forget all that garbage. If you'll turn to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, you're here on the earth, the Bible says, to help me. And all of a sudden now, I start reading God's word from a spiritual perspective and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to me truth. Man, the whole universe opens up. Now I start understanding what they actually mean. It all starts making sense. And until I did that, I didn't understand all the stories of the Bible. I had no idea why in the world God would come here and tell Israel to go out here and kill whole races of people, kill the kids and kill the wives and kill the animals and just kill them all. Why? Why would God do something like that? You know, why, why was David dancing naked before God? He's a, a big pervert or something? No. I didn't know why. Because I did not know God's word. And there's a guy, there's a religion out here teaches that kind of stuff. They were just naked before God because he had a devil in him. No, he, he didn't know no devil in him. But see, people sit here and they try to say these things from their national nationalities, from their roots of how they grew up. Okay? God wants to take you out of all that garbage. I don't care if he's born into privileged or if he's born an old trader and dirt poor. It doesn't really matter to God if you're black or white. He'll take you out of that and give you his DNA and he will make you something in him and the word of God will come alive in him and you're going to learn how to walk in the spirit in him, hallelujah, and then you don't really care at that point if you offend everybody or not. How do you think I preach? Because I was shy, I was quiet, I had a stuttering problem, I couldn't speak in school. Now I'm up here running my mouth and I don't keep you like me, I don't like me. I love you anyway. I really do. I'm not here to make friends. I want to be all of your friends. But if I was here trying to draw everybody in here and just be your buddies, I wouldn't dare preach this kind of stuff. I'd be like Joel Osteen. Love, 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 love. Happy, 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 happy. Motivational speaker. If I do that kind of stuff, everybody's going to come. Everybody's welcome. But here's what I'm going to say open for everybody. All homosexuals, all murderers, all liars, Everybody is welcome to come just the way you are. God will receive you just the way you are. I can't change you, but God can. But what I will not do is water down God's word while you're here because it offends you. If it offends you, it should. Because get out of your flesh and get in the spirit and God will change you. He'll take the murderer. He'll take the liar. He'll take the homosexual. He'll take the lesbian, the trans, all that little feminine spirit. He'll take, he'll take anything out of you that's not, that's not supposed to be there. He'll take anger out of you. He'll take hate out of you. He'll take anything out of you because that's of sin nature. But the world today accepts all this kind of garbage. And God's like, that's not for me. So please, 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 closing, please, don't go out here and buy a coexist bumper sticker. Seriously, coexist bumper stickers has nothing to do with God. God did not create Buddhists and Muslims. He did not create Catholicism. That was stolen. Read it. Study Dion, Dion research. Well, Greg, I thought Catholics was Christians. Well, you thought wrong. That's not what the Bible says. There, there is no way, scripturally, you're going to find that that way of salvation is what the Bible says. It's not. But you don't understand. But see, Muslims believe in Jesus. Catholics believe in Jesus. Jehovah's Witnesses believe in Jesus. I can name all of them. You can believe in Jesus all you want to. Believing in Jesus is not salvation. Is he the fulfillment of the covenant? Is he God or not? Did he take on the sins for you or not, and is he living inside you now? If you cannot say, because the Bible makes it real clear, very clear, that the Antichrist spirit cannot say that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's God. So when you get around somebody like that, ask him, is Jesus Christ God? 
That's what you'll see. Well, he's the Son of God. I didn't ask that question. Is he God? If they can't answer God, they have an antichrist spirit inside of them. Does that make any sense? This is how we know we're Christians, guys. I want you to have that and be full of that and be proud of who you are in Christ. And when Satan comes to us reminding you of how bad you are, okay, put him under your feet and show him his end, what the Bible says, and show him your place in Christ. And watch what happens. When he, when he knows you know that, he won't bother you as much. Can we stand to our feet? This message here, I know we're going back and forth, back and forth with the covenants and dispensations. We're not done yet. But next we're going to get into the Christ taking on flesh. Very, very interesting. And you're going to see that. Let me just go ahead and tell you up front now. Most of you already know this. Jesus Christ was not born on December 25th. Christmas has absolutely nothing to do with the birth of Christ. What? what, what? That's what the, I don't say that God's word says that. I'm going to prove it to you next week. But do I love about the birth of Christ? Yes. Hallelujah. We should know why Christ took on flesh. Okay? Amen? Amen. So get into that next week. It's going to go deeper than normal. I promise you that. Uh, because remember, the Christ had to take on flesh to do what? Die so you and I can have a new covenant. Amen? Amen. As we get ready to close, I think you're going to, you're going to, play, you're going to play a tape, Sean. As you're hearing this music, we're closing right here. If you are here and you are not born again, not if you're a member of a church, that don't mean nothing to me. Are you born again? Spiritually. You say, well, I don't, I'm not for sure. Well you'll, well, you'll know if you are. You'll feel it on the inside. You say, well, how do I get saved? Romans Road Prayer won't save you. How do you get saved? If you feel the Holy Spirit right now drawing you, the Bible makes it clear in John 6, 44, no, one, no man can come unto me unless he's drawn. If you feel the Holy Spirit drawing you, your conscience saying you need Jesus Christ, if you'll come just pray from your heart, repent of your sins, God will clean you, change you with a brand new heart. And I promise you, when he puts it inside you, the battle's just now starting. You'll die into Christ, be raised back up as a brand new creature. You're baptized into him, but then at that point, you have to start growing spiritually. I have known people in church 70 and 80 years old. I remember a 97-year-old man, I remember one time, he got born again and got saved and baptized right, 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 right before he died. I remember another 70, 80-year-old man who was a deacon in a church thought he was saved his whole life and realized that he wasn't. He was never born again. He was just religious. Religion is of the devil. It has nothing to do with God. God did not create religion of man. You can't pick and choose like a smorgasbord which one fits your life better. One believes in baptism and water. One believes in sprinkling. One believes in praying to Mary and one believes in the Quran. You can't go down those roads. Either you believe in God, true God of the Bible, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's God, or not. And Christ died under this one covenant for all of us, for all people who accept. So coexist is not going to work. Coexist is the devil. Why? Here at the end times, the Bible says there's going to be one world religion and one world government. It's all coming together as we speak right now. And it's all under the heading of the Catholic Church. But folks don't realize that it's happening already as we speak. Do, just do your own research. That's why I am a Christian, a born-again Christian. People say, well, what are you? I'm a Christian. Yeah, but, but, but what denomination are you? I'm a Christian. That's it. I'm a born-again believer in Christ, period. I'm his child. When I have that attitude, the Holy Spirit can open and teach me all kinds of things. Does that make any sense? So if you're here today and you need to be born again, I'll pray with you to repent of your sins. If you know for a fact you have been saved and God tells you to go do something, pray for someone. Whatever your need is, you do that. Be obedient to it. You need to be healed? Come on down. I can't heal you, but I know who can, who already has. We can pray for them, for the, for the manifestation of your healing. What's your need? But don't dare say, God don't heal no more. Sure he does. Is he the same God yesterday he is today? I'm trying, I'm trying to get you to open up spiritually what God's really saying to you. Amen.
Your relationship with Him is what matters. Religion won't help you, but relationship will. Amen? Thank you guys for coming. I love you. I hope you got something out of this. We're going to close here. Um, next week, try to come. Now, we're still teaching on Wednesday nights. We go deeper than this on Wednesday. We go line by line by line. And we have a lot of questions. And I love that. And how the Spirit guides us, that's, that's how we go. We meet, meet in the fellowship hall. You just a smaller group. If you can come, please come. If you need all this teaching we have here, I know uh, Sean's been doing a great job of getting it on YouTube. So he's going to be on YouTube. You can watch all these teachings, spread it, whatever you need to do. And sometimes I know this is deep stuff. I got that. But you know what? It's better for you to listen to it over and over and over until you get it and learn than to stay on the milk. Time to get off the milk. It's time to eat. <laughs> Amen. Get some steak in your mouth. That's what God wants to make disciples. Why? He wants to use you to help somebody else. Amen. Amen. If you can't come on Wednesday, if not, please come back next Sunday. It's going to go deeper than most, most of the times we have taught on this subject. Um, Gary, you mind close us in prayer?